So there is a lot going on again in the realm of space exploration and quite some stuff happened since the last video. For one there is a new report from NASA's Office of Inspector General and there is quite some juicy stuff in there about the costs of the Artemis program and also about future Artemis mission timelines. We'll dive right into that report. Then NASA has published a request for information for the aerospace industry and there is some quite weird stuff in there, to put it mildly. The weirdest detail certainly being that NASA wants to fly the SLS rocket for at least 30 more years. That is absolutely insane and we'll talk about it in detail. Then of course we'll also have to talk about the Russian anti-satellite missile test and lastly about the FAA and SpaceX situation as there is now a date where the FAA wants to conclude the environmental review process. There's a lot to talk about this time so stay tuned. So the new report of NASA's Office of Inspector General is out and there are quite some exquisite details to be found in that report, link in the description. For one, the cost estimate for Artemis until fiscal year 2025 is of course a lot higher than the official NASA numbers as the OIG also included costs from the full Orion development timeline. And as we know, Orion already started development back in the Constellation program as early as 2006. So taking that into account, they arrived at the staggering number of $93 billion until fiscal year 2025. They also project the current operation cost of one single SLS and Orion launch at $4.1 billion for Artemis 1 through Artemis 4. Repeat, $4.1 billion per single Artemis mission. Quite a bit above the $1 billion price tag for the SLS rocket which was emphasized by NASA time and time again. And of course the timeline for all Artemis missions has slipped with Artemis 1 scheduled for mid 2022, Artemis 2 the first manned lunar round trip has been delayed to at least mid 2024 and Artemis 3 the first human landing on the moon since 1972 has been delayed to at least 2025, but let's be realistic, more likely 2026 or later. In face of these massive costs and the constant lack of funding, the OIG suggests using commercial alternatives. They even have a nice comparison table between SLS Block 1, Block 1B, Starship Super Heavy, Falcon Heavy, New Glenn and Vulcan Centaur. It's not surprising that Starship wins in every category. Unsurprisingly also, Blue Origin didn't give a definitive anticipated launch readiness date for New Glenn. The OIG made this recommendation, quote, In our judgment, the agency should continue to monitor the commercial development of heavy lift spaceflight systems and begin discussions of whether it makes financial and strategic sense to consider these options as part of the agency's overall plan to support its ambitious space exploration goals." End quote. Note the wording here, consider these options as part of the agency's overall plan. So they strongly suggest to NASA ditching the whole SLS and Orion architecture and go full commercial. So in short, use a commercial launch system to do the entire moon mission so no SLS or Orion involved in any way. Something we have been saying on this channel for over two years now. But of course, it will be hard for NASA to ditch SLS. Not because they don't know themselves that the SLS is just a giant jobs creation program. No, because they know that they are obliged by Congress to use this outdated piece of rocket machinery. Their funding namely depends on it. There was a gigantic outcry of lobbyists and politicians in Washington DC already back in April when NASA decided to select SpaceX to build the human landing system for the Artemis program in form of the Lunar Starship. Now imagine the outcry that would happen if NASA was to ditch the SLS. Openly, NASA will always have to pretend to back the SLS and this they do to a ridiculous degree. How ridiculous it can get, NASA just recently demonstrated in their Exploration Production and Operations Long-Term Sustainability Request for Information RFI. 
link to the PDF in the description. In this file, NASA introduced lots of new fancy abbreviations. For example, the Exploration Systems Development Program ESD, which includes the Space Launch System rocket SLS itself, then Exploration Ground Systems EGS, and Cross Program Systems Integration. Ok, lots of fancy and cool abbreviations, NASA wins there. But here comes the kicker. We can read at goals, quote, the vision for the ETS is to establish it as a long-term, 30 years or more national capability that is a sustainable and affordable system for moving humans and large cargo payloads to cislunar and deep space destinations for NASA and to these and other orbits for other government and non-government users." End quote. Don't be fooled by the new fancy abbreviation because with ETS they actually mean the SLS and Orion. They call this the Exploration Transportation System. So yes, you have read that correctly. NASA wants, at least on paper, to fly the SLS for 30 more years. 30 or more. Like, imagine, until the 2050s. How hilariously detached from reality must one actually be to write such stuff. I wonder myself if the people at NASA who wrote this had a good laugh while writing this and smoked some really strong stuff, or if they actually believe it. By 2050, SpaceX will probably run five private moon bases and build the first or second city on Mars. And there we have NASA, meanwhile, still flying the SLS rocket once or twice per year. A really hilarious and bizarre vision of the future. I personally strongly suspect this to be an appeasement piece for the pro-SLS politicians in US Congress. Oh yeah, let's appease those SLS fanatics in Congress to secure some more funding. At least that's what I hope happened behind the scenes. If not, then it would make me really sad to see NASA so insanely detached from the realities of our time. Heck, by the 2050s, I think that even Blue Origin will have a private moon base. So this was a pretty hilarious display of appeasement or insane propaganda or outright insanity. I don't know what exactly this is. Maybe it's a combination of all those things. But yes, you can see how far NASA goes to at least publicly defend the SLS. Oh, and if you like space news with a bit of humoristic undertone and don't want to miss any important space developments, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks a lot in advance. Meanwhile, SpaceX is still waiting for the FAA's permission to launch the first orbital starship and super heavy launch system. And on this front, we at least have the news that the FAA will wrap up the whole environmental review for the SpaceX Starbase by December 31st. Meaning that by this date, the FAA will give its decision whether to allow SpaceX to launch Starship and Super Heavy from Boca Chica or whether they will decide to opt for a more thorough environmental impact statement, which would be really bad for SpaceX as this procedure usually takes years to complete. In all this time, SpaceX would be blocked from launching Starship and Super Heavy from Boca Chica, but Elon seems to be pretty optimistic. He tweeted this as a response to the news, quote, the hard work by FAA, US Fish and Wildlife and Texas Parks and Wildlife is much appreciated, as well as the strong local support from Cameron County and Brownsville South Padre, end quote. These are quite some friendly words from him who is usually not the best friend of the FAA, at least sometimes. But I personally am also very optimistic that the FAA will grant SpaceX the approval. First of all, pressure is mounting as NASA is now again backing SpaceX to build the Luna Starship for their Artemis program. The lawsuit with Blue Origin is over, NASA won and the FAA knows that. Also, the US military in general but the Space Force in particular has also often expressed a keen interest in the Starship. I dare say that with these powerful interest groups standing now behind SpaceX, the probability is very much in SpaceX's favor. Also, the majority of the comments which the FAA received were in favor of SpaceX, even from local residents of Boca Chica. Many said that the presence of SpaceX is a boon for the whole region near Brownsville. 
so it's looking pretty good. SpaceX should get the green light by December 31st, so that we can expect the first orbital flight of Starship and Super Heavy before the SLS. It will be a remarkable and historic day at some point in January 2022. That will be a good start into the new year. And now to some not so nice news. Russia conducted an anti-satellite missile test on November 15th, which of course created a large cloud of space debris. So now at least 1500 pieces of new orbital debris have to be tracked at all times, which will likely spawn hundreds of thousands of smaller fragments. These anti-satellite missile tests are just pure stupidity, because it will just get harder and more dangerous to get to low earth orbit for every nation, even for the Russians themselves. In fact, as a precautionary measure, astronauts aboard the ISS, and that also includes Russian cosmonauts, were ordered to take shelter for a few Earth revolutions until NASA was sure that no debris from the destroyed satellite would hit the ISS. These anti-satellite missile tests are so insanely crazy, as they every time create an insane amount of space debris. The problem of space debris is only getting worse and we'll have to think of some solutions fast, because the dream of becoming a multi-planetary species is built on the foundation of access to orbit. If we are trapped on Earth because orbit is full of dangerous debris, then getting off Earth will be a bit like Russian roulette, pun intended. Russia isn't the only country though that conducted such tests, India and China also did that in the last 10 years, with similarly devastating results. So that is certainly something that cannot continue, else we'll be trapped on Earth and we all know what that would mean. But it's still a way off until then and we can only hope that these idiots will realize that they are also destroying access to space for their own countries. So that's it for today. Thanks as always for watching. Jishuan and me really appreciate it. We wish you all the best. Have a nice day and on to the future.